Good afternoon, everybody. Um, today, I was going to be preparing some of this Bombix Noil that I had dyed. So you can see here, this is what it looks like. And so I thought it would be kind of fun to jump on and just share with you my, my process and how I'm going to prepare this fiber. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Alana Wilcox and I am a fiber artist. Um, so I just wanted to um, prepare this in two different ways because the, the noil, it's like these little nubby, slubby bits of fiber. So if I put it under the camera, hopefully you can see the, the texture that's, that's in the fiber. And so as a spinner, a lot of times this will get used as an add-in. So if someone is making a bat or they want like texture added to their yarn, they'll, they'll throw some of this in. So it won't be used necessarily 100%. Um, as, as an oil, it'll, it'll, it'll be blended, blended in. But because I dyed different types of fibers and I wanted to see how the same color looked on different fibers, this is going to become a sample for a book that I'm writing. So I wanted to have a little bit of texture, um, but then I also wanted more of it to be processed and smooth. So over here, I have two types of um, hand carters. So basically, they're going to be the tools that I use to prepare the, the fiber. So I've already started um, carding and blending on both. So this one over here, is a cotton hand carter so you can see there are these little metal spikes on it so if you've never prepared your own fiber um, these are tines right so like they're these little like metal bristles of, of a brush and they're used to open up the fiber so when I put the fiber on especially because this one is is referred to as a, a cotton hand carter meaning that there's more tines on it so this one is by Strouch and I believe it has here let me check I have it in the other window um, it has 255 time per times per inch so like if you were to look at a little square area here there's 255 of these of these metal tines so it's really like a lot of um, you know, metal um, bristles in, in between. So the fiber, in order for it to fit between the tines, has to be very fine, like like cotton. So conversely, over here, I have wool hand carters. So they still have the the metal tines, but the the tines on this one, um, it's thicker, and they're also spaced further apart. So there's more of a gap between. And also, if you notice the, um, the paddle part that the tines are attached to, this one is longer, the, the wool one is longer. And the reason being that wool locks are longer than, than cotton, right? Like the length of it. So if I were to pull this apart, this silk noil, you can see it's very short. So I can use it both on the, the, the wool hand carters as well as the, the cotton ones, okay? So the idea being that if I prepare it um, on the, the wool, the, the wool carter, so the ones where the metal tines or the bristles are spaced further apart, I'm going to have more texture in my yarn. And then the cotton one, um, it's more blended and so I'll have less texture. And so um, depending upon how many singles I spin and, and ply together, I can have two that are smooth and then one that has the bumpy texture. I can have two that have bumpy texture and one that's smooth. So I can play around with the amount of texture that's going into each single, even though I'm starting with the same fiber. So because I prepared um, on both, I'll just show you basically the, the motion for, for preparing the fiber. I like to hold the carter by making a V with my thumb and my pointer finger. And so this one, I hold in my left hand with my four fingers on the back of the paddle part and my thumb is kind of like straddling the, the handle here. And what I do is I go and I grab the fiber. So you can see that the, the tines are interlocking like so, but I don't pull this way. What I do is I turn it so that it's going more at a 90 degree angle and then I pull, I pull down, okay? 
So the act of doing this removes the fiber from the loaded carter, so the one in my left hand, and then the act of pulling it down basically brushes open any um, like spots that are, are more stuck together. So if you think of like a tangle in someone's hair and if you use a brush to separate the hairs, it's, it's basically the same thing. So I'm creating an open, airy fiber preparation. So this is referred to as a, a woolen preparation. And so once I have transferred all of the fiber over, over um, to the other carter, Hello, Riaria. Um, so I'm going to then take it and turn it into a Rolag. So to do that, I'm jealous of Florida, you guys. It's what, May 9th? And I only know that because the date is on my computer. But it's May 9th and it's snowing in Rochester. So there you go. Happy spring. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to lift up the end. And I'm going to roll it. Now, when you um, prepare cotton, you can use a chopstick or a wooden dowel to make a tighter um, rollag, and that is referred to as a puni. So that's more in the preparation of cotton, but I'm not necessarily looking to make it a tight preparation. I just wanted it to be more carded or more opened up than on the wool carter, okay? So this, this over here, is my my silk on the um, cotton carter and then I'm gonna do the same thing here so I probably blended this one I would say like four or five five times already and now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna do one more transfer just because I want the color to be as um, homogeneous as possible okay and so the the thing with dyeing um, silk is that it's really difficult to get the color to go all the way to the center of whatever fiber bundle you are dyeing. So you wanna make sure that you're soaking it for a long time to really wet the fibers so that they are receptive to receiving the dye. And also to allow it to sit in the, the dye liquid um, for as long as possible to, to um, absorb it. Yeah, knitting needles are great too because they're slippery, so then it like just slides right off. I don't believe, um, here, I do have a wooden one, so I guess I can show you this one on the on the wool carter. Um, but basically what you would do is you would take the fiber and you would wrap it around itself. Now this works with fiber that is a little bit more grippy, so like um, cotton or wool has a little bit more texture to it, but silk is more slippery, so it may not cooperate, let's see. I'm just pulling up the ends here and then rolling it around. And sometimes people will do this on the blending boards. I don't have a blending board, so I'm not familiar with all of the techniques that are possible on there, but then you can use this to kind of wind it around like so, you know, and then you can kind of um, press it more. So I want to I want to um, keep these separate just so I can see. But if I hold them both up for you, obviously there was a lot more fiber that I put on the um, the wool carter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to prepare one more on the cotton. So I have two singles that are going to be more thoroughly blended, and then I'm going to have one that has texture. Okay. So to do that. I don't want to overload the carter because if I put too much fiber on it, what will happen is that it won't separate it. So if you think of, you know, trying to brush someone's hair, if you're trying to get a knot out, you don't try to grab their whole scalp of hair. You know, you just want to get um, a little bit at a time. So to do that, I'm going to take the fiber and the act of putting it on is called lashing the fiber on. So I'm basically just touching it gently and kind of spreading the, the fiber on and because this is not really um, in a more consistent preparation it's kind of like a glob of, of fiber I'm just trying to put a little bit on at a time I'm not trying to just dump the whole thing on so I'm kind of just gently scraping the fiber on and you know you can see that 
it's got some areas that are almost white or undyed and then there are these other areas where it's it's really concentrated color um, and so this is just the nature of dyeing different types of fibers you're, you're going to get different um, results on them so because I'm trying to show how the same color formula in dye looks on different bases um, I want to blend it as much as possible so that it'll be like a visual average so that optically you can see okay if I'm going to work with you know noils then maybe I need to use twice as much dye or if I'm going to be using um, a fiber like superwash well that really absorbs um, dye and has affinity for, for dye then maybe I can use less so this is kind of one of my my color dyeing experiments so now that I have all of the fiber loaded onto the carter. Again, I'm gonna hold my thumb and pointer finger like so. My three fingers are on the, the handle. And I'm not starting at the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start like towards the end and I'm gonna try to grab fibers like these that are kind of hanging off. Okay, and you can see how it's, it's grabbed and, and transferred. So I'm gonna go and I'm going to interlock the tines, but I don't pull them one, once the metal is in. I kind of turn and rotate the carter so that it's more like a 90 degree angle. And then I gently pull down and I kind of go, and I'll turn it this way so you can see. I kind of go like down like this so that it allows the, the fiber to get brushed through the, the tines on, on the carter. Okay, so let me see if I can try to do this again real slow but turn it sideways. So I'm going like this and I'm grabbing it and kind of pulling it down. Now the silk noil is so short that you can't really see the, the effect of that but um, it tends to work more with, with longer locks. But I'm never trying to gnash the tines together. Um, I'm just trying to open up the fibers by, by inserting air into them. Okay, so you shouldn't hear like a crunching of teeth as far as like, you know, pulling, pulling them apart. You're just hearing the tines locking in, turning, and then pulling the fiber down. So what's nice about the, the carters um, is that you can see the degree to which the color has been blended and, and the fiber has been blended. So you can add more, um, you know, um, carding. I'm trying to think of like the, the times that it goes through. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not good with words right now but you can you can more cycles I guess right so, so like this would be like the second um, cycle or second round of carding and you can keep doing it you know as, as much as you like however depending upon the fiber that you're using um, it may put more necks and, and bumps and slubs in your in your yarn if you're not gentle so if you overwork the fiber you can actually not necessarily ruin the fiber itself, but um, it would it, it could cause like more knots and stuff if you're not if you're not careful in what you do when you come back. So again, this is a short fiber, so you may not notice it. But when I pull the fiber down, I want all the fibers to kind of be like hanging low like this. And if I bring them back, so like if they're not hanging like this, but if they're curled under then the act of going here will kind of make it like you can imagine like a little tumbleweed and then that can start to turn into a knot when you go to spin. So the idea of being very gentle um, and just trying to brush the fiber open as opposed to, you know, causing knots or breaks or, or damaging the fiber. So just a gentle touch really goes um, a long way, but also not loading your carter with too much fiber so that it allows the, the, the tines or the, the teeth, the, the, metal, the metal bristles to really do their, their job thoroughly. Just like, you know, you would just take a, a, a small strand of hair to, to brush open. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want to take a, a large clump. And you can start to see how it's getting more and more blended. Um, but because this is going to be one that I want to be as thoroughly blended as possible and have as little texture as possible, I'm probably going to card this maybe like two or three more passes. Now, I know that there are some people who are really good about transferring the fiber from one carter to the next so that they don't have to switch hands like I just did, but 
I haven't perfected that. So my goal <laughs> for this social distancing time is two, two things. The first, I want to learn how to crack an egg with one hand and open it up. That's goal number one. And then two is how to keep the fiber in the same, in the same um, hand. So like you see how I had to do a switch, right? Well, some people, I don't know, they do this trick where they like go down and they could just reload it on. I don't know. I have, I'm not there yet. I don't, I don't prepare enough fiber um, to, to learn all those tricks, but it kind of reminds me of those hibachi chefs that are really good with their knives, you know, doing fancy tricks like that, but I still get a good, a good result. So that's, that's the main thing, right? Even if I have to stop and switch. Okay. So you can see how it's beginning to get more, more blended. Um, and I'm really looking at the color, not so much the texture. So I'm probably going to do one more to make it a little bit more homogenous. And then I'm going to spin it up. So again, I'm trying to make a three ply. Okay. I'm going to um, spin this Bombic Silk Noil into a three ply. And then I'm going to weave a little square with it on my little miniature weavette to just have a little sample so that I could see how the resulting yarn looks in, in woven fabric. Because of all of the um, fabric making techniques with yarn, I like the, the flatness of, of woven fabric. It doesn't have the, the ridges, you know, um, in it quite as much as like a, a crochet stitch might or a knitting stitch might. So I feel like that's the best way to see how color will look. Um, okay, so yeah, so that's looking really good. I mean, I do have the flex of color, but that is part of those little neps and noils. But for the most part, um, the color is pretty consistent. So I'm going to go ahead and blend it one more time. So I'm happy to stay on and, um, you know, continue the live and spin if you have, if you have questions um, about like spinning techniques, drafting techniques, prep techniques, or I'm also happy to post a picture at the end. I'm not sure where, where it's better to see the, the results if, you know, seeing it with like this camera or um, a well-lit photo um, helps. But yeah, I love, I love three plies too, but especially because um, you have to really know your fiber, right? So I know that silk needs a lot of twist, but I also know that because it has the texture in it, if I spun it thick, then those parts could like fly out. So if I spin it thinner and then I have three plies, imagine there's like a little bump, okay, for, for the noil. But if it's got two strands of two singles next to it, it will act like a seatbelt, keeping it in more. And if I have high twist, it'll it'll act like a seatbelt. Um, but if I were to do a really lofty, airy, lightly twisted spun yarn, um, what might happen is those those noils might pop out. So this is just a sample. But again, when I'm preparing a sample, I'm trying to think like, what is the end goal? You know, I want to have a fabric that's going to be relatively durable. And, and if I'm putting texture in, I want the texture to be locked in. I don't want it to look pretty as yarn and then not be functional once it's in its final fabric. So, okay, so I can try again with the, oh, see what happened here? How the fiber went back like that. So that can give you knots and stuff. So let me, let me try here. So um, what what you would do is you would take the, and, and again, this works better with cotton or um, a fiber that's a bit more grippy. Silk is a little bit slipperier, so it doesn't quite work as well. But you can use the, and, you, and, it, and normally you would put this in your laps, but my camera won't go that far, so. I'm going to try to do this on the table. Okay. So yeah, so you would just kind of curl the, fab the, the fiber bundle around the knitting needle. And then you would slowly roll the knitting needle up. So in essence, it's like a roll lag. It's just a lot tighter. It's not as loose and as airy. It's kind of more compacted. So it's the same preparation. It's just more squished, more, more condensed. Okay, so now my fiber is ready to be spun. Okay, so I have a woolen prep, so I'm going to spin this woolen, and it's just gonna really allow for the texture to come through. So I'm gonna have 
some fiber that's not prepared so that people can see what it looks like before it was parted. Which, you know, it's kind of interesting, right? Because if you looked at this mass, you might think you would get um, a darker appearing yarn. But when you look over here, you know, it kind of gets lighter light denim, right? So it's, it's kind of interesting how different stages of what a spinner can do can actually influence the color a lot. Okay, and then also the act of adding twists will compress the fibers, so um, it'll be less translucent and, and more opaque in its, in its final form, and therefore it will um, appear darker, because right now it's a little bit more translucent. All right, so I'm just gonna get started spinning. I like to spin on my Hansen electric spinner. It is very versatile. I find that I can spin pretty much any fiber type on it and get excellent results. I like it better than a traditional wheel because it's putting in a consistent amount of twist and therefore it just makes my yarn more consistent just even like that, that factor alone. Also why I like it is because I have over here a foot pedal but I like to use it as a hand pedal so um, I will you know hit it to turn it on and then I will hit it one more time and that will turn it off so I can spin at a table or on my couch. Also as another modification, um, I put a little piece of Velcro on, on the side here so that when I'm spinning, I can just set the yarn in the Velcro and it'll hold it for me and it won't, it won't take the twist out. So kind of a, a nice little feature. Okay, so first I'm going to spin the textured one. So this was the one that I prepared on the wool carter. And I'm going to attach it to the leader. Okay, now because this is a very short fiber, and it's a very fine fiber, and it's slippery, I want to turn my wheel up, or my spinner up, so that I have a lot of twist going on. Okay, so it's going to spin very fast. And as I'm spinning, I'm picking up all of this great texture. So I'm just going to spin. Ooh, wasn't secured to my eater. And I'm going to get that back. So when you're, when you're spinning and you're putting a lot of twist in, it's really important to know the threshold of twist or the amount of twist that a fiber can take before it breaks. Now, what happened when you're spinning, especially a yarn that's textured, you have thick and thin spots. And the, the twist will skip over the um, thick spots and they'll go to the thin spots. And why that's important to know is that you might think that you're having twist added, um, but it's, it's actually accumulating in a, a finer area. And so therefore, um, the, it's, it's going to break because that, that, that fine area isn't able to, to hold that amount of twist. Okay, so let me just get this to the line. Now, the one thing that I don't like about spinning silk oils is there are hard, crunchy bits. And I can only assume that the hard, crunchy bits are bug parts. And I really don't like bugs in general and the idea of touching a bug just grosses me the out. <laughs> um, so the idea that I'm, you know, kind of casting off these little discarded bug, bug body bits is kind of gross. So I'm trying to not think about it. And I'm just trying to think about how pretty this yarn is going to be. But when you get to those hard, crunchy parts, it's kind of, it's kind of tough. <laughs> so I'm going to move this up over here so you can see the amount of texture that is going into this yarn. And so I have a bit of a lag on my um, recorder, so I'm just going to wait and see, make sure that it's in focus. But yeah, you can see that it's got really neat, cool texture to it, but this is going to be the more highly textured yarn because this is the one that I'm creating with my wool carders, right? So gonna have a lot of great texture and another reason that 
so I said I'm doing the, the three ply because I want I want the um, two singles that are adjacent to this wool wool cartered one um, to kind of help be the anchor to hold these slubby thicker bits in. So that's that's one reason. But also by creating a three ply, I'm making a thicker yarn. And so for my wool um, that that I've prepared and dyed. Those yarns are, are thicker because I was starting with a thicker diameter of fiber. But because silk is finer, instead of spinning it thicker, I just add more ply. So spinning a finer fiber can be slightly more time consuming if you're trying to get it to the same wraps per inch um, or, or gauge as a, as, a, as a thicker yarn, right? So like obviously spinning a lace weight yarn is going to take a lot longer than spinning a worsted or a bulky weight yarn. However, if I want my silk or cotton or any fine fiber to um, withstand abrasion and be as durable as the same thickness of, of yarn in, in wool, then I just need to spin it finer and add more plies, as opposed to trying to spin it thicker and then having it disintegrate. Okay, so I'm gonna keep keep going and spinning this. Again, I'm trying to pull out any hard, crunchy, bug body bits that I might come across. And if someone knows um, what the heck those crunchy parts are, if they're not bug bits, like, I don't know, please tell me that it's something other than a bug bit. <laughs> but I guess that's the nature, right? When you when you spin um, a, freshly, a freshly shorn sheep, you have the joy of pulling out grass. And when you spin silk, you have the joy, I guess, of pulling out bug bodies. So Sharon, you asked me what, what other yarns am I using? What do you mean? Do you mean other fibers am I using? Oop. Hang on. So as far as, far as um, the study on color, I've used about, I would say 35 different fiber bases. So, I'm using um, different types of, of wools. I used a matte um, fine wool like hormone, and then I used um, some border, border lester locks. Um, I used different types of silk. So I've dyed silk cocoons. I dyed the, the noil. Um, I basically tried to find as many different fibers that I thought spinners would spin to um, to, to dye on, or the dyers would dye, since this is for um, a dye book that, that I'm writing. But um, I have silk fabric, I have wool felt fabric that I dyed. What was interesting when I dyed the silk cocoons, because again, I'm not really like a um, a user of, of silk, I'm just I'm just dyeing it and using it to, for, for visual comparison. But, ooh, crunchy bug bits. Um, <laughs> So sorry about that. They're just really throwing me off. So the um, I'm sorry, I got I got thrown off by the by the bug bits. But the the other fibers that that I'm using are are ones for visual comparison, so that I could see how the fiber looks like on mohair or the dye rather looks like on mohair versus versus silk. Oh, so I was talking about the silk cocoons, right? So it's interesting. I tried to dye the silk cocoons based on weight. Now the silk cocoons still had silk worms in them. Obviously they were they were dead, but their their bodies still contributed to the weight of the overall cocoon. And so when I was dyeing the different fibers, I was doing it based off of weight to figure out how much dye the given fiber you know would need. So if I was dyeing wool, you know I weighed the wool and, and dyed it. If I was dyeing yarn, I weighed it and I dyed it. Um, but when I when I weighed the silk cocoons, I didn't account for the weight of the bug's body. So I got these really um, super deeply richly saturated cocoons because I used way more dye than what the silk itself could account for. So then I did it again without the cocoons. I mean, sorry, with, without the pupa, without the, the silkworm inside. Um, and so as a side-by-side -side comparison, I then figured out what is the average weight of a silk cocoon pupa so that um, if someone wants to adjust their dyes for, for the silk cocoon with or without a silk pupa in it, they can. So 
that's just the kind of interesting behind the scenes stuff that I'm, I'm fascinated with when it comes to working with fibers. Oh, so um, Sharon, for the other plies, I'm going to be using silk. So this is going to be 100% um, Bombix Noil that I'm using. And like I said, the reason is, is that I'm trying to show how a single fiber looks like when it's when it's dyed with the same with the same color. So I didn't want to to do a blend um, with other fibers because then that would influence the the color. So yeah, so I'm just trying to spin enough so that I have a little sample and then I can um, leave it and show it as a color sample um, for the for the silk oil. And so this style of, of drafting is a woolen short draw. And I'm stopping every now and again just because I want to pick out the bug bits. I don't mind the texture of the silk noil. I just don't want a bug to be part of my texture. I mean, if that's, if that's what you like in your yarns, all the more power to you. I just don't like tomato stems in my salad. So there's no wrong or right to this. It's just whatever whatever you prefer. So when I'm when I'm spinning this too, um, like I said, I'm gonna have one single that's gonna be the noil that was carded on the wool carder. So it's gonna be a lot thicker, and it's gonna have more texture like the, the, the texture bumps are going to be thicker. So the actual single is going to be spun the same, but the, um, the lumps and bumps in it are going to be thicker because they haven't been carded out. Whereas the one that's um, carded on the cotton carders, they are going to be more finely blended and not so, not so sticky outy. All right, so yeah, so I'm gonna go finish spinning this up and probably by tonight or so, I should have the yarn spun so I can, I can post a picture of that. And then um, tomorrow I can, I can leave the sample so you can see how the resulting yarn um, looks like in fabric form. So thanks for hanging out with me this afternoon. And I hope you've enjoyed seeing the difference between how the, um, the wool carters work and the um, cotton carter. So have a great day, everybody. Take care. Thanks again.